When it comes to graphic design, it always starts with a sketch, an idea, a concept that you want to create. And when you have done exactly that, sketched out a concept that you want to create, how do you then make that into a graphic? Well, there are many, many different methods in order to do that. And today I'm going to show you how I changed sketches like this into designs like this. Hello again my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to go from sketch to graphic. And for this, I'm going to use one of my own sketches. So, for today, I'm going to show you one of my methods that I use for doing letters. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, when you start, you're going to want to import the picture that you require. So, for me, it is this picture here. I have already done this graphic, I have done this one, I've even done the S, but the only one that I haven't done is G, and I like all of these designs, I think there is a certain something to each individual one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this letter G here, and I am going to crop this to make it more manageable. So with it selected I'm going to get another square I'm going to make sure that square covers the G or the area of this little imported image that I want to keep and then go to the select tool again select on both right click and go to set clip and there we go now technically it's still exactly the same size you just cannot see it you can revert that back to the way it was previously. But for now, because we don't need to resize it, reshape it or anything like that, we're not going to run into any problems. But for future reference, if you are trying to crop a picture that's been added as an import and then you try and perform path commands on it, it will not work. But for today, I'm going to just use this. I'm going to increase the size. And there we go. And do you know what? It's slightly slanted, so I'm just going to make sure that I slant it a bit more. So it looks more vertical. And then I'm going to turn the opacity down. I just want to be able to barely see it. And then once we have got it in the position that we want it on the canvas, a little bit higher about there then we are going to use a new tool to this channel, which is the layers menu. Now the layers menu can get quite confusing if you are new to it, but what we're looking for is this menu. Now, if you haven't got this menu open, you can come to the top toolbar and these three little black dashes that are stacked on top of each other where it says open objects, Click that and this layer menu will open. At the moment, we have only got one layer and one image within that layer. So what we're going to do is make sure that we know what this layer is by double clicking on the name and I'm going to enter template. And there you go. It's changed color now to signify that this is a template. Now, three icons at the right hand side this first box will simply open up your opacity and your blend modes now this is good for when you want to do shadows and things like that but for now you don't need to worry about that the second one is the eyeball when the eyeball is open you can see when it's closed you can't just like life <laughs> and the third one is the padlock when you have got the padlock closed like so it means you cannot interact with that layer or that image that object what you've got selected here at all until you unlock it 
and then you can select it again so we are going to lock this template because we don't want this to move or shift about in any way and then we are going to come up to this little button here where it says add layer and we're going to call this one line work and then we're going to add another layer for the more complex designs you would have a third layer called color and this is where you would put all your color options and the line work would be where you put all the thick dark lines but we do not need that for today all we need is the line work so it doesn't interact with the template underneath for the color the color would be separate so the line work would go on top if you ever want to move things around then that's what you do you click and you drag like so but for now we do not need the color layer so we can come up here and get rid of it now we're going to select the line work now we are working on the line work layer and we can have as many layers underneath this in this section as we want but today we are going to be just making some basic shapes and i'm going to show you the two different ways that you will do this the first way is the simple way of getting a shape that you think looks similar to the shape you're trying to redo like this for the bottom of the g and use that shape and then you can loop them all up together and union them together but we're not going to do that this time today we are going to use a different method using the shape builder tool now before you would have to union them all together you would have to work with the layers now with the shape builder tool you don't need to do that the other method that you can use instead of using blocked shapes is using the pen tool which is right here on the left hand side you can use the pen tool to map out all the main shapes so that's what i'm going to do just to show you a different method so first we're going to start from the bottom here and then i'm going to map out the full shape of this curve here so we're going to click come to each of the points make sure that we have got a nice curve on it which isn't going to stray too far from the original design now as you can see i have purposely made a few mistakes because i wanted to show you another feature one of the most powerful features in inkscape is the edit paths by nodes tool now as you can see once i've selected that tool all the nodes will appear for that shape and i have purposely made it bumpy and made it uneven so i could show you how to rectify it now when you select a node these two handles will appear you can then use these handles to manipulate the main shape and you can move the position of the node itself by clicking and dragging it along so if we want this to be a lot more curved we can simply move it down and then manipulate the other handles until we get to a shape that we're happy with but then there is also the fact you can just simply click onto a point within the shape and you can bend it yourself if you're not happy you can just keep tweaking until you are and it's as simple as that once you are happy with the shape then you can just simply union them together or use the shape builder tool to select the bits you want to keep and the bits that you don't now for this bit it's just one sweeping block and a circle on the end so what i'm going to do is simply create the circle 
like so around there and now I am just going to use the pen to do another shape And just like that, we've made the main shapes that we need. Now, what I want to do is I want to leave a gap between these shapes here. So, in order to do that, I can simply take this shape, which is already selected. Control, Alt, D, or right click and duplicate. And then once you've got that shape, you can increase the size and then hold control just to scroll down and turn snapping off if it gets in the way which it might well do around there is good for me and then we are going to select everything come into the shape builder tool and now we can select all the areas we want to keep and get rid of everything that we don't. So, at the moment you can see the plus icon. If you hold shift, it will switch to the other side. So this is the get rid of. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of all the bits that we don't want. And then we are going to union everything else together as the shapes that we do want. So with the plus icon and not holding shift, we select all these pieces as one shape, finish, and as you can see, we have now got our main design. Now of course you could tweak this in any which way that you like. Personally, I think I want to keep this bit black and then have this letter as a different color could because it's meant to be a letter G if you haven't already guessed that much so we're going to go with this one turn that black we're going to go with this and turn that black as well and then I'm going to go with the tried and true colors I'm going to go and select both of these and then we can union them together I go into path union that makes it all one set uh, one single shape so when I come to the fill and stroke and I put a gradient on the gradient will match the entire length of the letter so we're going to come down to the gradients tool I want it to go into a diagonal direction like so and then we're going to come over to the fill and stroke menu we're going to make sure the opacity is turned all the way up on the right hand side and then we're going to change the colors so I want it to fade to a very light blue because blue is my favorite color and <laughs> I always default to blue and I'm going to go with a dark blue on the bottom and now we are going to make sure that the stroke is turned off and now if we come back to our layers we can go back to the template turn the eyeball off and there you have it you have your design now in order to make this pop make it just a little bit better my go-to in a rush is always to select everything Control alt d to duplicate it turn it all black drop it to the bottom and then come to your fill and stroke menu and just add a slight blur maybe drop the opacity down and then maybe have all these pieces selected so you can just bring it up so it looks like it's coming off the page at you and there you go my friends 
how to go from sketch to graphic in very few steps let me know if you have any troubles and if there's anything that i can help you with and i again would love to see your designs send them all to buttonpressgraphics at gmail.com until next time my friends i'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and i will see you in the next one